Turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Romans chapter 6. Now, we've been talking about the subject rightly dividing the word of t truth in 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The Apostle Paul is the only writer in the scriptures that tells us to rightly divide the word of truth. Because, and we've seen that it's because there are different programs in your Bible. Your Bible is, is 66, made up of 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New. And of the 27 in the New, 13 of them are written by the Apostle Paul and by inspiration, of course. All the books are written by inspiration of God. And so the Apostle that was inspired to write Romans through Philemon tells us to rightly divide. And the reason why we're to rightly divide the Scriptures is there's a big difference in the operating programs that Israel was under in time past and that we're under in this dispensation of grace. God is the same God. You know, some people want to argue about right division. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, but He changed His programs because He is God and He can do what He wants to do. And if you have a problem with that, with God changing the program, you need to take that up with God. And if you want to take his word and put it in a blender and blend it all up and say it's all the same program, it's just going to bring confusion and frustration to your spiritual life. You can't keep the program that the Lord Jesus Christ gave his disciples to keep today because you're not under the law program. And God didn't give it to you for your instruction for obedience. Now, there's a lot of truth that's throughout all 66 books of the Bible that we are to operate under and, and to keep as believers. We walk by faith in the instruction our Heavenly Father has given us to walk under. And if you want to serve God today, you need to serve God by following His program that He gave you for your obedience today. Um, hold your place there in Romans 6. There are plenty of verses that give us instruction to follow the, the instruction that was given to us through Paul. One of them, just one of them, and we're not going to take time to go through all these this morning, but one of those is in uh, Romans chapter 16, verse 25, which tells us, Now to him, to God Almighty, now to him that's of power to establish you, how are we established today? According to my gospel, that would be Paul's gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now, through Paul, is made manifest. Okay? And by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God. Again, God's commandment. What? What was it given by God's commandment for? Made known to all nations for the what? The obedience of faith. If you want to be obedient to God with your faith, then follow the verses that tell you how to be obedient. That's why Paul gave us instruction to rightly divide the word of truth. And, and last time we were together, we started talking about the, one of the major differences between the programs. But now, this dispensation of grace, beginning with, with Saul of Tarsus converted on the road to Damascus, name changed to Paul in Acts chapter 13, uh, the dispensation of grace with the revelation of the mystery kept secret uh, since the foundation of the world, but now is made manifest by the revelation of Romans through Philemon. Time past, God made a distinction between Gentiles and the Jews with the covenant of circumcision as a sign. Throughout the scriptures, when you see circumcision given an exalted position over the uncircumcision, the Gentiles, you know you're in time past. You're not in this dispensation of grace. In the dispensation of grace, there is no distinction made by God between Jews and Gentiles. Anyone who trusts that Christ died on the cross to pay for their sins can be saved and made a, a member of the family of God, the church, the body of Christ, God's raising up today. Doesn't matter if you've had that that uh, ritualistic uh, circumcision made, given to Abraham for the nation of Israel to make them distinct from the rest of the nations. 
There's a reason God made them distinct from the rest of the nations. Israel wasn't a nation until God made them a nation out of the seed of Abraham and Sarah. God made a nation and then said, okay, you're going you're to keep yourself separate from the other nations because the other nations are wholly given over to idolatry and the worship of Satan's religions in time past. And they were sacrificing their, their own offspring, their own babies, to their gods of, of, in idolatrous worship. They were worshiping the devil and just doing it in the form of Baal worship and other worship. And you know about Israel. On the mountain, Moses was getting the Ten Commandments from God and the other laws. He comes down with the Ten Commandments and what did he find? Israel worshiping a golden calf and they were celebrating having their, their drunkenness and the, other, the rest that went along with that. That's, that's what God wanted Israel to be separate from, to be a, an example nation to the rest of the nations so that they could find salvation in God and see the advantages of living like a believer in time past under Judaism. But the Word of God makes a clear distinction between us today and the law program that He gave to Israel. And if you're, please turn to Romans chapter 6 again, if you're not there now, and look at verse 15. The Apostle Paul says, well, let's start in verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. That's what we, that's what we all as believers want, is not to, to, for sin not to have its control of us. We have an old sin nature. When you get saved and trust that Christ died for your sin, God, the Holy Spirit, indwells you. The Word of God works in you, effectually in you, when you believe it. But you still have to deal with the old sin nature. And Paul says this is the way, the way you're to live and to walk as a Christian today. This is the program God's given us to live under for obedience. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Couldn't be any more clear. We're, as believers today, we're not under the law program. Now, that doesn't mean that the moral law, the Ten Commandments, aren't in effect. Those laws are, it's common sense. God doesn't want you to lie, kill, steal, uh, commit blasphemy. Uh, covet things that belong to other people. God doesn't want you to do those things today, and he, and he still wants you to love Him with all your heart, mind, and soul, and not to have any other God before Him, obviously. But the rest of the program, the 613 commandments that God gave through Moses for Israel, ceremonial law, uh, law for governing that nation, uh, there's civil law, there's, there's all types of, of aspects of the law program, but the main importance that you need to recognize with not being under the law or being under the law, the big distinction is God made a contract with Israel in giving them the law. And he told Israel, if you keep my law, you hearken unto my, the words of my law, and you love me as your God, you, you don't have any other gods, don't put any other gods before me, I'll bless you above the rest of the nations in the world. But if you don't hearken to my, to, to my law, if you don't listen to my word, if you don't listen to my instruction I've given you under the law to live under it so that you can be holy and separate from the rest of the idolatrous worshiping na nations, then I'll cast you out of the land just like I cast the, uh, the idol worshiping Gentiles out of the land before you. And Israel ends up being disobedient to God most of their history. You read the books of, of Samuel, and you read the, the books of Judges, and you read the books of, of uh, Kings and Chronicles, and you see Israel's history is, is just fraught with disobedience to God, God having to judge Israel with their enemies, and, and it ends up with them being carried out of the land into captivity in Babylon. When the Lord shows up, the Roman Empire is still in control over Israel, Israel is a subservient nation to Rome, and that's why they had to have permission to crucify their Messiah from a Roman governor. So Israel has lived under the curse of the law all the way through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But a lot of believers today think what they want to do to serve God is to serve Him by putting themselves under the law program, thinking that if they, if they can produce the righteousness that the law would, was given to produce, then God will bless them. 
And if God doesn't uh, see them walking in the righteousness that the law was given to produce, then he'll curse them, just like he blessed and cursed Israel in time past under the law performance program. It, the problem with that is, number one, God didn't give it to you as a performance program to live under. America is not Israel. We're not, the church today is not spiritual Israel. So, the, so we need to recognize when the, the verse that written by the apostle who is the, look at, uh, if you don't mind turning with me to Romans chapter 11, verse 13, I want you to notice, for I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Who's your apostle today? It's the apostle Paul. And when that apostle was told by God to give you instruction like sin shall not have dominion over you for you're not under the law, but uh, but under grace. What then shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. God doesn't want us to sin. Not being under the law it isn't God giving us free license to sin today as, as believers. And that's what the critics of Paul's doctrine they want to bring up that if you tell people that they're not under the law, they're under grace, they'll just sin more. And, and they just are spiritually unable to discern the truth that Paul's giving us. Because it's through Paul's revelation that we understand Israel was only under the law as a temporary program. It was to be replaced by the new covenant. When Christ shed his blood at Calvary, it was, it was promised to Israel as, as Israel's Messiah would come and be their redeemer and redeem Israel from the curses of the law that they were under in time past. Israel couldn't live under the law without, it, it, without condemnation and destruction. And that's what they had in the end. They, were, they lost the land because they couldn't live under the law program. We couldn't do it either. And so God has given us the spiritual blessings promised to Israel under the new covenant, namely eternal life as a free gift. And it's by faith, just like Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. And so I want you to look at a few verses. Uh, go to Galatians chapter 3. Last time we were together, we looked at Galatians chapter 3. And there's many passages, but I want you to see the temporary aspect of the law program given to Israel, as Paul explains it in Galatians chapter 3. Um, he starts out, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So Abraham didn't have a son, and God told Abraham, I'm going to make of you and Sarah a great nation, and you're going to inherit this land that he gave Abraham the dimensions, and it started from the Nile River, goes all the way up to the Euphrates River, and all the way east over into what we call Iraq and, and Iran area. That's all promised to Israel as a possession. Okay, so we don't get those promises today as members of the Church of the Body of Christ. We're not going to inherit the land that God promised to Israel. But when he said, I'm going to give it to you as an everlasting possession, that's eternal life. That's what we get in on as members of the Church of the Body of Christ is the gift of eternal life that's from God Almighty who takes care of our sin problem that results in our death Everybody's died since Adam because of sin. We're going to be delivered from the curse of sin as well. And that's, that's our spiritual blessing that we get by being identified together with the Lord Jesus Christ. The moment we trust the gospel, God the Holy Spirit sees our faith in Christ and His Holy Spirit places us in Christ and seals us in Christ. God made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him, in Christ. So Christ took care of our sin problem on the cross. He didn't just take care of Israel's sin problem according to prophecy. But part of the revelation of the mystery is God also died, sent His Son to die for the sins of all men so that He could offer eternal life today by simply, by grace through faith, trusting that Christ died for your sins. In Galatians chapter 3, we read on here to... Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Eternal life, I just went over those promises. Verse 17, And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before 
of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. Now, the Abrahamic covenant, the promises to Abraham, then I'm going to make you a great nation. You're going to inherit this land as an everlasting possession. You'll live in that land forever. Those promises, okay, cannot, the law that came along 400 years later with the law of Moses, it says here, can't disannul the promises God made through Abraham. For if the inheritance, verse 18, eternal life, for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. This was an unconditional covenant he gave to Abraham. God gave it to him by promise. This was a contract and a covenant it had two parties to uphold it, God and Israel. It's not a promise. The law program did not promise Israel they could be in the land forever with all the blessings and be blessed above all the other nations. They weren't promised that. They were said, they were told, if you obey my law and submit unto, under it, and you keep me as your God, Israel, then I'll let you live in the land. But it's up to you to perform it, the law. So that's the difference between a performance program, Israel's, their life, their sanctification, their walk as a believer under the law program, and a promise of eternal life through faith that God gave to Abraham. Okay, so look at verse 19. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. So Israel comes out of Egypt, led by Moses, and the first thing God does is He makes this law covenant with them to deal with Israel's sin problems until the Messiah would come and He could make Israel righteous through the blood of Christ under the new covenant. So the law was temporary, and it was to be replaced by the new covenant. And so if you read on here, verse um, 20, Galatians 3.20, Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God, the promises made through Abraham? God forbid, for if there had been a law given, which could have given life, eternal life, Verily, righteousness should have been by the law. Christ didn't need to come to make Israel righteous if they could keep the law. But the Scripture hath concluded. Now, you can insert the law there for the word Scripture. But the Scripture hath concluded all under sin. The law as a schoolmaster proved Israel and everybody else is under sin. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ, He was faithful to go to that cross, might be given to all them that believe is a faith issue. Before faith came, until this, we were kept under the law, shut up under the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be what? Justified by faith. And I want you to read a couple more verses. Um, verse 25, but after faith has come, being justified by faith, trust in Christ died for your sins, being made righteous in Christ, what does it say here? After faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. What's a schoolmaster? The law. If you put yourself under the law as a believer, it's just going to make you a, a better sinner is all it's going to do. It's going to help you to sin better. Because your, your old sin nature will rebel against any law or religious program, and you'll sin worse being under a performance system. And Paul proves that in Romans chapter 7. Look at verse 26 of Galatians 3. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, there is neither what? Jew nor Greek. That's it. Or you can, Greek is another way of describing Gentiles. Some were Greek speaking. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed by faith and heirs according to the promise. If you're in Christ, you're one with Christ. Christ is Abraham's seed. Okay? If you're in Christ, he's the one that God promised Abraham. All those promises of having that land as an everlasting possession are going to happen over here in that kingdom. They're going to get that through the righteousness God made them in Christ, Abraham's seed. 
So those promises were made through Christ as Israel's Messiah. I want you to go with me to Colossians chapter 2. Verse 10, great chapter here in Colossians explaining our relationship to the law as believers today. And ye are complete in Christ. The moment you trust the gospel, you're complete in Christ. You are perfectly righteous in Christ. That's talking about your inner man. That's talking about God indwelling your spiritual nature and God in Christ. Uh, you're identified, made one with Christ spiritually. God sees you. He sees you as who you are in Christ. It's not talking about your old sin nature. That's in your body of flesh. Okay, so it says that um, we're complete in Christ, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. That's circumcision of faith. And putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. That's this right here. In Christ, in, when you're identified together with Christ, you died with him 2,000 some odd years ago. In Christ, when he was finished paying for our sins, he said, it is finished and gave up the ghost. And he was separated from that body that was made sin for us. He was buried. And three days later, God raised him up in a body that will live forever that's glorified. When Paul saw him, he'd shown brighter than the noonday sun. Okay? So in Christ, we're completely righteous. God sees us as completely righteous in Christ. And God cut away the sins of our flesh from our spirit our, and regenerated made alive our spiritual nature the moment we trust the gospel. Verse, 20, verse 12 says, Buried with him in baptism. This isn't water. Buried with him in baptism, identification with Christ, being identified with Christ spiritually in his death, burial, and resurrection. Buried with him in baptism. When he died, you died with him. Wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins... And the uncircumcision of your flesh, that's your condition before you were saved, you were spiritually dead, hath he quickened, made alive together with the Lord, with him, having what? Forgiven you all trespasses. How many times can you be forgiven all trespasses? Only once. When did Christ pay for your sins, all trespasses? 2,000 years ago. He had to die and pay for all your sins in full up front. And one thing that death does is it cancels any kind of a death sentence. You can only kill somebody once for a crime. You can't make them alive and kill them again for it. Christ died one time, paid for the sins of all humanity at one time. The problem is we are not in Christ when we're born. We have to trust the gospel to be put in him and, to, and be uh, take advantage of the benefit of him dying on the cross to pay for our sins through faith. And that's the, ash, the trusting the gospel, the gospel, simply believing that when Christ died on the cross, he died to pay for your sins. Okay, so it says, verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. That happened when he died. He was made sin on the cross. All those sins were violations of the law. The law condemns man. All the law can do, it's a, it's a schoolmaster to teach us what sin is, what righteousness is, that you're not righteous. That's the main lesson the law is to teach every, every person that's a believer, is that we're unrighteous, God is righteous, we need God to make us righteous. That's the job of the law. But Christ took away the, the curse of the law. The, the law brought judgment and condemnation. Christ blotted out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. Our old sin nature can't keep the law. And took it out of the way, nailing it, the law, to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, and made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. I just wanted you to see in that passage, in Christ, we're not under the law. I want you to turn with me to Galatians chapter 4 and look at verse 1. Now then I say, it's talking about the law being a temporary program and that you and I as believers are not under the law. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. It's talking about 
think in old times, <clears throat> under the Jewish program of Judaism, a child, even though he was an heir, he was the seed of his father, he was treated like a servant. The servants in the household could give a child orders until they were of full age. Twelve years old was usually when they had a bar mitzvah and that child became of age. And when they were of age, then they, were, they received the inheritance of their father. Verse 3, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made of, under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Howbeit when you knew not God, you did service unto them that were by nature no gods. But now, after you have known God, or rather known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto you desire, to be, uh, desire again to be in bondage. So what was happening is, these Galatians, they're some of my... I, I came from the Celtic people, some of my blood is Irish and Scottish, and, but the Celts migrated from the area in, in the area around England, in that area, down into the area of the Bible, we don't have the map up, but down into the Mediterranean area, down near uh, where Ta Saul of Tarsus was from, um, and it, it was uh, north of Syria, or west, northwest of Syria. And so the Celts, the Galatians, Paul preached to them, and they were idol-worshiping people. That's what their, their history was, is worshiping idols. And when they were saved, the Jews came in to the Galatian churches that Paul established and tried to put them under the law of Moses and told them unless they were circumcised and kept the law of Moses, they would not be blessed of God. And so the Galatians, that's why Paul had to deal with uh, chapter 3, verse 1, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you, this only would I learn of you, receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain, he that ministereth to you the Spirit worketh, and mirac worketh miracles among you, Paul, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. And he's telling them it's by the hearing of faith, it's not by the works of the law that you're going to get blessings from God. Even as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness, know you therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all, all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law, this is true to everyone today, as many are, who are of the works of the law put themselves back under Judaism, under the law program, they're under the curse of the law. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith, and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. <coughs> so it's clear, through Paul, we're not under the law. The law was a schoolmaster to lead Israel to their Messiah. You know what they did with their Messiah. They crucified him. God was willing to enter into the new covenant with Israel and take them right into his kingdom. They rejected it. God's going to come back after this dispensation concludes with the rapture, the catching away of the church, the Lord will come back, judge Israel's enemies, and set his throne up in Jerusalem. He'll reign on the throne of David among Israel. Israel will be the chief nation again, the nation of priests through which the Lord reigns over the entire earth. And Gentiles will be uh, in submission to the nation of Israel again. 
uh, in the kingdom. But the church, the body of Christ, is going to rule and reign with Christ in the heavenly places.